Open your Bibles, if you will, Colossians chapter 2 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, if you will, please. And I'm going to tell you, tonight might just be a little bit different than normal. Instead of, you might get more of a Bible study and teaching kind of thing tonight. I Just whatever the Lord have done, we'll see. But I, I got to reading this and couldn't get away from it. In the day and time we're living, there's a lot of people, for lack of a better phrase, on shaky ground. There are people who have, and I don't really know why, the Bible teaches us very plainly that we are built on the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And even back in the book of Daniel, the Bible tells us that Jesus is that stone that was cut out without hands. Man had nothing to do with who Jesus is. Just as God told Moses in the book of Exodus, when he said, I am that I am, Jesus Christ is that great I am. He is as solid and firm as can be. And I understand tonight that if you're saved by the grace of God, you're saved by the grace of God. And I firmly believe you cannot lose that salvation if you've really got it. It ain't but one way for us to get shaky. And that's for us to start taking a step one side or the other off of that firm foundation that we're on. And there are people in this world that have been saved by the grace of God and they look and they question why things are happening and they begin to, to question their faith. You say, preacher, you, you've been dealing with that a lot here lately. Yeah, and I'm seeing, still seeing people walk away. Mm-hmm. And this ain't a rehash of some, something I preached a while back. This is, if God's going to keep giving us something new, I'm going to keep trying to, trying to tell you. I'm afraid we get pulled away because of people. There are people that try to convince us that, well, God don't love you and God don't care for you and God ain't nowhere around. And if God was real, some of these things wouldn't take place. And we get shaken and we get moved from our foundation and we begin to have our question, our beliefs. And sometimes it's, well, God, are you who you say you are? You better be careful asking questions like that because remember, that's what the lost thief that went to hell said. Uh-huh. If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. I don't have to ask him if he's Christ. I know who he is. Uh-huh. We've met. Yes. We've walked some miles together. He has brought us through some things and you say, preacher, you never questioned your faith. I've questioned my faith, but I've never questioned him. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just going to say that honest. There's times I've got weak in myself, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's still on the throne and he's able to do what needs to be done. Maybe. But what I need to do is just keep my eyes on him. Yep. So when we look over here in a minute, when we look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I might be a little bit out of context when I read those two verses, but that's okay. We'll get back where we need to be in a minute. If you're able to stand tonight in respect to the Word of God, Colossians chapter number 2, I'm going to start reading in verse number 4. He says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. He's bragging on the church at Colossae. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with Thanksgiving. Now over in 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Start in verse 1. Well, yes, just I'm going to read verse 1 and 2. Hang on, I'm going to wait. Y'all go ahead and find it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us as the that the day of Christ is at hand. Thank you. You can be seated. Let's pray. Father, we ask you again this evening to help us now. You've been mighty good to us today. You've watched over us. You took care of us. You supplied our needs. You've given us health and strength. Kept us safe. You watched over us in every way. I thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us to come back to your house. I thank you for this opportunity to meet together again with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you, Father, most of all for saving us. I thank you that Jesus was willing to go to that cross and do everything necessary. I'm thankful, Father, that He didn't back down. He didn't refuse, but He did the will of the Father. Died in my place and shed that blood so that I could be free. Please forgive me where I've let you down, where I've failed you, where I've come short. Because, God, I need you this evening. I know that a dirty vessel cannot be used. So that if there's anything at all between me and you, take it away. Get it under the blood, Father, I beg you now to help me. I thank you for the time in the prayer room. I thank you for the songs that were sung. But I need you to help me tonight. I pray, Father, that you give me the words that you'd have said. Show me what you'd have done. I pray tonight, God, that you just reach down in the way that you see fit. Overshadow this place with your spirit. And give me that fresh touch one more time. I pray, God, that you'll clear my mind, not let me think about anything tonight, tomorrow, but just think about the word that needs to be spoken. And I pray, God, tonight that you'll watch my mouth and not let me say anything other than what you would have said. Help me tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. To say something that would help somebody that would lift somebody up, to, that would encourage somebody, that would exhort. But God, at the same time, magnify you. Go with us now through the remainder of this service. Have your way. For we ask it in the precious, sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Paul's talking in 2 Thessalonians because some people had been saying, hey, the resurrection's already passed. And he said, I don't want you to be shaken in mind. I don't want you to be shaken in spirit. I don't want you to be troubled. I don't want, it doesn't matter whether there's a, there's a spirit that comes to you. And you say, now wait a minute preacher, I'm saved by the grace of God. And the Holy Spirit should be dwelling within me. Yes, it will. But don't you tell me the devil won't come and sit up on your shoulder. And try to tell you something. They'll try to lead you in the wrong way. They'll try to upset you and try to shake and you, shake your faith and try to get you to work. You're wobbly and, and, and want you to try to step off of that firm foundation. He said, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter from, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. He said, don't you even worry about the fact that Jesus has already come back. Oh, you. Hey, if he was coming back, I'd have been gone. Well, once in a while I'll go into a room there at the house and <laughs> where did she go? And I'll go to the other end and I'll say, well, there you are. Miss mm -hmm. Gwen will say, yeah, you thought you missed it, didn't you? <laughs> I said, no, I know I didn't miss it because I'm still here. <laughs> now, we can talk about things like that, but I'm telling you, yeah, right. you need to have that confidence in Christ. 
And if you don't have that confidence, you need to get it settled. Right. And you need to get it settled tonight. Right. You need to know beyond the shadow of that and you're saved, child of God, and that if Jesus Christ comes back right now, you're going to hold away with him, but you're not going to be left behind. Mm -hmm. And Paul said to them, don't let anybody, don't let any written word, no spoken word, no spirit, no attitude, don't let anything come to you and shake your faith. And that's what he's telling this church here at Colossae. He's talking about them being shaken. He's talking about them not being as firm as they were. Now, he tells them down there, and, and I know that as he, he tells them in verse 5, he said, I'm thankful. He said, I'm beholding your joy, your order, and your steadfastness in Christ. And that's what you and I have to have tonight. But apparently there are people who have lost that steadfastness. There are people who have lost that joy. There are people who have lost that firmness and the stability in their Christian life because they ain't in the house no more. And I don't mean they're just not an house awesome anymore. They're not anywhere anymore. Yeah. It's like I used to have it, but I ain't got it now. And I'm telling you, if you ever had it, you've still got it. Yeah. And one of the most miserable people there is in this life is not somebody that's lost and enjoying the trip to hell. It's a child of God that's out of the will of God that God's chasing or dealing with. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right, brother. And you wonder sometimes why these people, you see them, they ain't never got a smile on their face. And I got to tell you, I wonder what's going on with them. You either ain't saved or you're being chased. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, if we're in the will of God and we're saved by the grace of God, thank God there's going to be a little something in our step. Yeah. We're going to have a little good looking, I mean a smile once in a while. We're going to have some joy. And I know this life is not always just happiness. Mm -hmm. But whether you're happy or not, you ought to have the joy of the Lord in your soul and know that, thank God, whatever you're going through, He's still right there with you. So, Amen. He tells us, I don't want you to be shaken. I don't want you to be messed up. I don't want you to lose that firmness. So I'm going to get in here and and like I said, this might just be a, a Bible study. If it is, that's fine. But you just ask God to do what needs to be done this evening. Verse number 6, or verse number 4, excuse me, says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Paul said, listen, I'm bringing this up for a reason. There's people that talks. There's people that runs their mouth and don't know what they're saying. There's people that's going to try to confuse you. There are people that's literally going to try to mix you up. There's people that's going to try to throw you off. There's people that's going to get you to question your faith. There's people that's going to get you to look around and say, well, you know what? Is he really got all power in heaven? Is he really got me for the duration? Is he really coming back after us? Or is this life just it and there is nothing else? Well, I'm going to tell you something. If there's somebody that's talking to you and they're filling your head with this kind of stuff, folks, I ain't trying to be ugly, but it's time to walk away. Right, yeah. It's time to turn around and walk away. We don't need anybody else in this world trying to drag us down. We don't need anybody else in this world trying to tell us it don't matter what you try to do for God. This is the end of it. You know, because of the way you were before you got religion, you're going to hell anyway. Well, bless your heart, I didn't get religion. I got saved by the grace of God. Amen. And I still might not be perfect, but I ain't what I used to be. And the sins that was in my life are under the blood right now. They've been washed away. They've been cleansed. And what God gave me, you can't take away from me. That's right. Amen. And it's time to just say goodbye. Amen. Amen. You say, preacher. No, listen to what I'm saying. Jesus said, if you go in... Luke chapter, I can't remember what chapter, but he told them, he said, if you go in, shake the very dust off of your shoes and walk out. Amen. Now, you ain't going to convince me tonight that God ain't God. You ain't going to convince me tonight that Jesus Christ is not the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You're not going to convince me tonight that Jesus Christ is not my Savior. You're not going, there is nothing you can say tonight to make me question my salvation. Right. 
I believe he is who he is. And I believe he did what he did. And I believe, thank God, he's going to do what he said he'd do. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to tell you tonight, like one of these preachers on television, every, every time they get together, he'll hold his Bible up. He'll say, repeat after me, I am what I am, and I am what the Bible says I am. And I'm going to say, yeah, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing. But anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible says in Romans chapter 16, mark them which cause division among you. That's right. Yeah. Now, when there's somebody that comes, if there was somebody to come into this church and they'd say, you know what? I really believe, and they're professing Christian, I really believe that there is another way other than Christ. Mark them. Yeah. You say, now, what do you mean mark them? Let me get done. If there's somebody that comes in and they begin to teach, you know, I'm a child of God, but I can do this and still be in God's will. And I can live like this and mm -hmm. still be in God's will. And I can do these things and still be in God's will. And those things they're talking about is contrary to the Word of God. Mark them. Yep. You say, what do you mean? When we talk about marking them, we're talking about separating ourselves from them. Mm -hmm. He said, the defense is contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Now, I, I ain't trying to be ugly. And again, that's not saying that we're better than they are. But there needs to be some separation going on in this life. And if Brother Kenny was to come up to me, and Brother Kenny is a member of Austin Baptist Church. Brother Kenny is a professing Christian. But if Brother Kenny came up to me and he said, You know, preacher, I think it's all right. To be a child of God. And to, and he starts listing all things that's contrary. Mm -hmm. I'm not only going to avoid him. I'm going to say brother you need to change your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And if he don't change. I'm going to get a deacon to come with me. And I'm going to say well brother Kenny. You need to change. Mm -hmm. And if that don't work. I'm going to bring brother Kenny before the church. And I ain't going to just avoid him. I'm going to do what I can to put him out. Now, you say, preacher, that ain't right. Well, according to, according to Jesus, that's right. That's right. Word. That's straight out of the book. Yep. Amen. Avoid them. Listen, the devil is doing his best to tear churches up as it is. That's right. And I've told you before, there ain't one person outside the walls of this church ever going to destroy this church. That's right. That's right. Then it's on the inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So he says, you mark them that spread doctrines that are contrary to what you've heard and avoid them because they serve not our Lord Jesus, but they serve their own selves and their own belly with fair speeches to deceive the simple. Now listen to me. When he says simple, he's talking about those that are unlearned. Right. He's not talking about simple-minded. He's not talking pe about people that's slow. He's not talking about people that has mental issues. He's talking about people that have not grown in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Talking about people who have not spiritually matured. He's talking about people who have not hid the Word of God in their heart that they might sin against God. Yeah. And what they need to be done is they need to be marked. That means they need to be called out. Yeah. And if they're not going to change, they need to be moved out. Yep. It doesn't matter who it is. doesn't matter whether it's my family, your family, or whatever the situation is. The Bible makes it plain. Sin, sin. And you come spreading that, well, it's all right. No. Mm -hmm. I made this statement three or four or five weeks ago. What used to come out of the pulpit that would convict hearts. Mm -hmm. Now there's no conviction. There's just, preacher, you offended me. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know what? I've got to the point somebody says you offended me. So what? Mm -hmm. the word. You said, that ain't no way to act. You, uh, you take it the way you want to. If I've offended you, that's one thing. If the Word of God's offended you, <laughs> get over it or get right. Amen. Right, yeah. Bible tells us there will come, 2 Timothy chapter 3, in those last days, during those perilous times, 
that these people will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And when they, and from such, what does he say? From such turn away. Right. right. And they look good and religious and they'll carry their Bible and they might be dressed right and they might walk right and they might talk right. But some of the words that's coming out of their mouth, if it ain't right, walk away. That's right. Still, you know, he told Titus, you, you keep sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. He told Timothy, preach the word. Right. We got time for foolishness. People are dying and going to hell and we're running out of time. Jesus is getting ready to come back. We ain't got no business for false doctrine, false teaching, false preaching. I've heard Sunday school this morning. Mm -hmm. Right. You say, how easy is it? It's real easy. Genesis chapter 3, Eve looked at God and said, The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happens in a lot of people today that's walked away from God. The devil beguiled them and they eat. They swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm. And when that happened, they got on shaky ground. They weren't firm on that foundation anymore. They began to wobble. And before you know it, they fell out. Now, I'm telling you this. Again, if they were saved, they're still saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But my Lord, at the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. People that have been taught, people that have known better, people that have learned better. You say, well, what about the one that comes in and tells them those things? I'm going to tell you what the book of Galatians says. Book Galatians says in chapter 1, let them be a curse. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you hear what I'm saying now? Any cat comes in here, anybody, you watching on television, you listening on the radio, please, you better know who you're watching. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> they'll tell you something that's contrary to the Word of God, and they're trying to tell you some other gospel, and they're trying to tell you it's okay to live in a way that's ungodly. It's okay to live in a way that's wicked. As we heard this morning, again, I, I, I didn't realize going right back to that Sunday school lesson when it says, you know, that, that we, they turned the grace of God into lasciviousness. Yep. In other words, they've given us that grace of God is a license to sin. That's right. You know, you're saved, so you can do whatever you want to and still go to heaven. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Uh -uh. And anybody that will tell you that, According to Galatians chapter 1, they're not saved either. That's right. Now, them ain't my words. I ain't their judge. I'm telling you what the Word says. Mm -hmm. And the Word's already judged it. Yep. And the Word says if they bring unto you any other gospel, let that man, even if an angel brings you anything, you let them be accursed. Mm -hmm. yep. Literally, let them be doomed. Let them face, go back and get you one of those, those, those concordances. It's got that picture. Let them Face damnation is what it says. Uh -huh. He said, preacher, that's ugly. No, the Word of God says they're not saved. Right. Yep. So he tells us, he says, And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And that word enticing is persuasion through temptation. Uh -huh. Oh, Eve, look how pretty it is. You know it's going to be tasty. Well, that's the way it is with, when people are telling you, you know what, you're saved. You can still do this and be fine with God. You can still do this and be right with God. Yeah. Yeah. It looks good. Seducing. And leading away with doctrines of devils. Let me get on or I ain't going to cause this quarter to say them already. Verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order. Paul said, I'm not there in person. But thank God I'm with you. I'm lifting you up. I'm praying for you. Paul wasn't talking about spooks. He wasn't talking about ghosts. He said, I'm praying for you. I'm lifting you up. I'm thanking God for you. And he said, I see the way you're doing things. He said, I'm beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. I see the things that you have arranged. I see the dignity. And he's not talking about acting stuck up. He's talking about how God wants everything decent and in order. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when he's talking about decent and order, he ain't talking about don't say amen. He ain't talking about don't shout if the Spirit of God lays a shout on you. Being in order is the opposite of chaos. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. God means for things to be done in His order. And He said, all right, you church at Colossae, He said, I'm not with you in person. He said, but I'm lifting you up and I'm thankful for you and I'm proud of you because I see the way you're doing things. See, folks, if we're saved tonight, Jesus said in John chapter 16, it is expedient that I go away. For if I don't go away, he said, the comforter cannot come. And if I depart and the comforter come, and then when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. In other words, he's going to convict this world of sin. He said, I see how you're standing steadfast. I see the way, he said, beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. If we're saved by the grace of God, then that Spirit of God lets us know. Listen to me. Romans chapter 8, again, makes it plain. If we are led by the Spirit of God, then we are the sons of God. I think we're safe in turning that around. Yeah. I think if we're the sons of God, we're led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Because we have not that spirit, we're none of his. Mm -hmm. So because he has gone away and that spirit has come, then when we get out of the will of God and begin to walk a little shaky, and we begin to walk and start dabbling in the things of the world, the spirit of God begins to come and begins to convict us and reprove us. And you say, well, oh, you wait a minute. Are you telling me that as a saved child of God, you have gotten out of the will of God and God has never convicted you of it. You say he never has preached. You ain't saved. Read Hebrews chapter 12. The preacher, you're throwing around a whole lot of this. You ain't saved. I'm just telling you what the Word says. I ain't judging you. But if you can live any old way you want to and God does not chasten you and God does not convict you, there's something wrong. Yeah. Because the Bible says the Spirit of God will convict you. Yeah. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to live like this church in Colossae. He said, I behold your order and your, your steadfastness in your faith in Christ. He said, I know that things are going around and people are trying to shake it. People are trying to knock you off and people are trying to confuse you. He said, but I'm thankful for your steadfastness. That's why he closed out 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when he's talking about that the resurrection and he takes it logically, takes 58 verses to logically prove the resurrection of Christ. And he tells us in verse 57, but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 58, because we ought to understand tonight that we have that victory in Christ. And that I'm not on the losing side. And thank God I'm going home with him one of these days. Therefore, because of all this, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So there's no point in us wavering. There's no point in us wiggling. There's no point in us wobbling. There's no point in us stepping off of that foundation. Look, I know I've preached a lot in the last little bit about walking away from God. And I ain't even preaching on that tonight. I'm preaching on let, don't let anybody mess you up. Don't let anybody confuse you. Know what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. Right back to what it was. Was it Wednesday night or a week ago Wednesday night? The reason that we can't use this Word because I preached on the Word being that weapon of deterrence, the weapon of offense, the weapon of defense, and the reason we don't have that weapon is because we ain't got our nose in the book. We don't know what the Word says anymore. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But see, we get confused as a termite and a yo-yo. We don't know whether we're going up, down, sideways, round, around or what we're doing. And we're not standing as steadfast as we ought to be standing. But James chapter 1 says we need to be careful. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be unstable. We don't need to be wobbly. You know, the word, 
something that irritates me more than anything else in the world. Now I'm talking. I'm, this is carnal. Now this ain't spiritual. That's to sit down in a chair with one leg shorter than the other three. Boom, 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 boom. Or you got a table that's boom, 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 boom. Now, as much as a table and a chair that's wobbly irritates me, what do you think it does when I get that wobbly and I irritate God? Mm -hmm. I don't need to be unstable. I need to be solid. And ain't but one way I'm going to be solid, and that's to stay on that cornerstone. That's to stay on that rock that the church is built upon that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Amen. That's right. So quit trying to take a step and quit trying to listen to some of these people that will tell you some of this other stuff. Live the way God would have you to live. Amen. As we therefore, verse 6, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. We need to walk. If I'm in Christ, I need to walk the way He walks. And I know I mentioned this before, but several years ago they come out with these pins and these bracelets and, and these little badges and all these things. WWJD. Yeah. What would Jesus do? People would say, well, I just believe in loving everybody and, and just let it go at that. And we love them into hell sometimes. Yeah. Because we won't say anything about sin. We won't say anything about lifestyles. We won't say anything and that's going to offend or convict or hurt anybody's feelings and we just love them right on into hell. Yeah. And they love the church and they love the preacher but never do get saved. Yeah. We need to walk as Christ walked and He preached on sin. He preached on... To go back. You read the four Gospels. He preached on hell more than He did on heaven. Yeah. He made it plain. Sin's real and it'll cause that separation from God. Now, so what are you and I supposed to do? We're to walk the way He walks. Yeah. Yep. The Bible tells us over in 1 John chapter 1, we declare unto you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus said He was the light of the world. He told us when He went away, now we're the light of the world. And we're to let our light shine. But if we're walking in darkness, there's something wrong. We declare to you that God is light and in Him is no darkness at all. And if we have, say we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, then we lie. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes a preacher can be bold. John says, if you're walking contrary to what the Word of God says, you can say you're right with God. You're lying. Yeah. We lie. And we do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is the light, then we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all sin. Yeah. We do things, and I, again, I'm just going to say this, that the only time we live like a child of God is on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday evening, there's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We go home, and my wife knows how I really am. Mm -hmm. She does. And, you know, we pick, we carry on a lot, like I said a while ago, but don't you miss it, do you? But, you know, I, I, based on my wife's life and her testimony, if something was to happen to her right now, thank God, I'm going to meet her again. Mm -hmm. And I think she knows if something happened to me right now, she's going to meet me again. Yep. But we get out of the house of God and we get away from people of God. And how do we live? What comes out of our mind? What do our hands do? Where do our feet take us? What do our eyes see? What do we want to hear? We go back and I think sometimes even some of us that's grown and got gray or white hair or maybe no hair for that matter, we still need to go back to that little children's song yeah. and say, be careful little eyes what you see. Yeah. Be careful little hands what you do. 
Be careful little ears what you hear. Be careful little feet where you go. Because we need to make sure tonight, if I say I'm a born again child of God, I ought to be walking in the light. And I ought to be walking in the darkness when Jesus was talking in John chapter 3. He said the reason men loved darkness was because their deeds were evil. Yeah. I guarantee it. And, and don't take what I said a while ago wrong. I would love them, them little fellas that, that messed all that up. I'd love to see them get right with God. Yeah. Run, yes. I don't have that desire for anybody. But let me tell you something. I guarantee you they didn't do that in the daylight. Right. Mm -hmm. We walk in darkness so people won't see it. Yeah. Last little bit, there's been a lot of churches where they took catalytic converters off the church bands. They have gone into some churches. I ain't heard as much about it here lately. But was ripping out air conditioning systems so they could get the copper. Yeah. They didn't do it in the middle of the day. They did it in the dark. They like the dark. And that's why that darkness has always been associated with the evil. Now, so how am I supposed to walk? I'm supposed to walk like, like Christ walks. I'm supposed to walk in the day. I'm supposed to walk in the light. I don't have any business walking in the dark. And if I get away, let's say I leave here tonight and I tell my wife, well, i got to go do something. And, and I go off and slip off somewhere else. I go down to a bar somewhere. I go down to meet a woman somewhere. Or I go down to a crack house somewhere and get high. I don't want to do that when she's around. I won't do that when those you know, church people are around. I'll do it in the night and do it in the dark. Folks, listen to me. He said, preacher, saved people wouldn't do that. Maybe not, but professing Christians will. Yeah. And when they walk in that dark, John says, we're lying. <coughs> we're lying. We deceive ourselves because we're not walking the way that Jesus would walk. It tells us over in 1 Peter chapter 2, and I'm going to read this. He says, Christ left an example that ye should follow his steps. He who did no sin, even there was neither any guile found in his mouth. When reviled, he reviled not again. And when treated evil, he threatened not. And he did that so that you and I should live under righteousness. There are people that dislike you and me intensely. There are people that would love to see us fall. There are people that would love to see the lights out in this place and the doors locked. There are people in this county that's got no use for God. Got no use for God's people. What you and I are supposed to do is go ahead and live the way Jesus would have us live and follow His example. And if they cuss us, just smile. You say, preacher, that's hard. It's even harder to turn the other cheek sometimes, ain't it? But that's the way you and I are supposed to live. That's hard to do. It's one thing. You do it to me, I'll take it. Do it to my family. It's a different story. I'm being honest. I'm not being arrogant. I am not being arrogant. I'm not trying to be obnoxious. But Jesus said, just remember, if the world hated you, remember it hated me first. Yeah. So when we realize that people want to see us fall, when they realize that people don't want to hear the Word of God, they can hear it. He's talking this morning. Oh, they can put up. They can have all kind of music shows, and they can have all this other. But when you go to talking about the Word of God, they start climbing up. Yeah. As ye have therefore received Christ, use the Lord so to walk ye in Him. Let's look at verse seven, and I'll quit. And we'll go home. Rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving.
rooted and built up in Him. You know, you see a lot of trees. I've seen them in the wind. I've seen them blow. And I've seen them snap off. And you know, there might be something in this life one of these days that will come along and snap me off and take me out of here. But most of them, it snaps off. They don't get blown up by the roots. Yeah. Now you hear me? Yeah. If I'm going down, I'd a whole lot rather be snapped off and going home to glory than for the wind of the devil to come by and blow me over and I ain't got enough roots to hold me in the ground. I need to understand tonight, and you do too. He's the vine. He's the root. I need to be rooted and grounded in Him so that I can stand firm. I'm afraid there's too many professing Christians tonight that are like where part of that seed fell and it fell on stony ground where there was no place for the roots to go down and get a hold. But tonight, you and I need to be rooted and grounded, and if we are rooted and grounded, if we are steadfast, if we are firm on that foundation, if I am standing on that solid rock, then thank God I can abound therein, and with thanksgiving, and when it's all over and done, thank you, Jesus, because you're the one that brought me through. That's right. Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 17, blessed is a man that when the trouble comes in the land, thank God his roots are firm, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes, but her leaves shall be green and he shall not be careful in the year of drought. You know what? When the rest of the world goes dry, and it seems like people are saying, where's God? And when it seems like heaven's dried up and you can get no, you get no peace and you get no blessings and, and you wonder, it seems like sometimes when you pray, His prayers don't go any higher than the ceiling. Thank God I still don't have to worry. Even when it's dark cloud and pouring the rain and the thunder and the lightning and the sky's just as black as coal. Thank God I still got enough sense to know that on the other side of that cloud the sun's there shining. Mm -hmm. That's the same way it is in our spiritual life. It doesn't matter how strong the storm or how deep the valley or how rough things are getting. On the other side of them clouds, He's still there. He's still there. And thank God Matthew chapter 7 tells us that He that Heareth the word and doeth it. It's like a man that builds his house on the rock. Mm -hmm. And when the storms came and the wind blew, the house stood firm because it was built on the rock. Mm -hmm. Don't be wobbly. Don't let anybody convince you that, that God's dead. Don't let anybody convince you that God does not love you. There's some of you in here tonight that have faced health problems. You faced family problems. You faced economic problems. There's been times you didn't know where the next meal was coming from. Don't you ever let somebody convince you because you're going through that God don't love you anymore. Amen. If something was to happen to me and I have been blessed down through my life with help, but if something was to happen to me, Put me flat on my back. I hope that I've got enough grace. I hope I've got enough conviction. I hope I've got enough assurance in my soul. That I can still say, ain't God good? Amen. Old song that Howard Goodman used to sing, I don't regret a mile. That I've traveled for the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't regret a time that I've trusted. In his word. I've seen the years go by many days without a song. But I don't regret a mile. 
Well, I'm coming to tell you, that's the way we need to be one of these days. Because that's how, verse 7 says, we can abound therein with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus said we needed to build on that rock, He's telling the same thing that James said in chapter 4, or chapter 1. We're not just to be hearers, but we're to be hearers and doers. And if we'll hear it, and we'll do it. Now listen to me. Remember what James said in chapter 2. If we got faith, we're going to have works. Mm -hmm. And if I've got enough faith in Him to realize that He saved my soul, I've got to have enough faith to see that He's going to see me through. Yeah. So I don't have any right to be wobbly. I don't have any right to be shaky. I don't have any right to take my, one of my feet and take it off of that firm foundation and off of that rock. What I need to do is just stand there and be steadfast, unmovable. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what the devil comes along and says, you're facing this and you know God don't love you. God's took your job. You know He don't love you. God's took a family member. You know He don't love you. God's took your help. You know He don't love you. We need to have the guts <coughs> to look the devil in the eye and say, but yeah, devil, you know though, God still said that His grace was sufficient. Mm -hmm. And thank God in my, in my weakness, He's made perfect. Yeah. He's going to see me through. Tonight, the world's not getting any better and it ain't going to until Jesus comes back. I, I used to think that maybe it was getting better for a little while before it got worse. I think we're on the downhill slide now. I really do. I don't think we're even going to see a blip of an upturn. I think we're on the downhill slide. I don't know what's going to happen before Jesus comes back. But thank God I know that from yesterday to today I'm a day sooner than seeing him. Amen. Yeah. And I still want to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear the words, Wayne, why did you stop short? Wayne, why did you question me? Why did you doubt me? Why did you get to the point that you ever questioned that I loved you and that I take care of you? And I know I just mentioned this just a couple of weeks ago, but don't ever forget, Jeremiah chapter 29 still says, and he might have been talking to the Jews, but I'm going to claim it anyway. Mm -hmm. Know the thoughts that I think of you are good only and not evil. Mm -hmm. God loves us, folks. Mm -hmm. He'll allow things to come in our life, but don't you ever think he's got something against you and he wants to see you fall. Bible still says he's going to uphold me with his right hand. I got to trust that. Mm -hmm. So tonight, I don't know what somebody might have said to you. I don't know what the devil might have whispered in your ear. I don't know what some preacher you might have heard foolishness on television or on the radio. But I'm telling you tonight, stay steadfast. Mm -hmm. I ain't saying don't walk away. But, you know, I know there's a lot of people that are. But I thank God the ones that are in here tonight, I told you, I, you know, you, we fill up the church sometimes on Sunday morning. But when you see that Sunday night, that Wednesday night crowd, mm -hmm. they come because they want to. Come because they got a desire to. They don't come to be seen. Right. You know you're standing firm. Yeah. Don't let anybody shake you. Folks, after what he's brought us through, then we don't have any reason to doubt him now. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep on going. If you're here tonight and somebody has put something in your ear, somebody's put something in your spirit, and you've got to the doubt where you're doubting that God even loves you, God even cares for you anymore, let me just remind you, thank God he loved you so much that he sent his son to die for you, and that love has not changed. Mm -hmm. If you've got something in your life that you need to bring and lay on the altar and lay it down and walk away, come on. Give it to Him. 
If you're here tonight and you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're a saved child of God, you need to make it right and have that assurance before you leave here. If you're here tonight and you know you've never been saved, you need to realize God is the one in this world and through eternity that's never going to let you down. So if you ain't looked at anybody else, you need to look to Him tonight. Look to Him. And the Bible still says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whatever's needed tonight, hey, don't step off that rock. Don't step off that cornerstone. The world ain't nothing but wobbly, shifting sand. You don't want one foot in the sand and one foot on that rock. You'll shake and wobble like the rest of the world does. And also, stand firm tonight. And you stand on that rock that said a while ago that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Mm -hmm. Father, as we come to you again, we do thank you for the day. Thank you for allowing us to be back in your house. And we thank you for each one of these that's come out. We thank you for this time we've had to spend together. And thank you for the opportunity we've had to look at a portion of your word. Now, Father, I pray that you take the message and use it. I know it was simple tonight. But I pray, God, that it's touched hearts and it's touched lives. And God just encouraged to stand firm in these last days. Be steadfast. Be unmovable. As Paul told that church at Colossae, he's heard of our order and he's heard of our steadfastness. God, I beg you tonight, keep us in order. Keep the chaos out. Keep us from getting shaken. Father, if there's some that will tell us that maybe we don't know the truth and we're not saved and there's no hope for us. God, let us just walk away and cut people like that loose. Don't let us listen to that stuff because once it goes into the head, Father, it's there. We don't need to hear that. We need to hear, thank God, and let, every, let God be true with every man alive. And I'm thankful tonight, Lord, we've got your word. I'm thankful tonight we can stand on it and depend on it. Have your way in this invitation. If there's one of your children here that's Got a little shaky if there's one here tonight that don't know Jesus. If there's one here tonight that's not walking where they need to be, God, let them get it right before they leave this place. Have your way for what you do well. Thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.